Okay, folks, here we go. We got uh, problem number four here. It's to calculate the entropy change. And um, after this video, I'll go through, actually at the end of this video, I'll go through what these different changes in enthalpy and entropy mean, not just in like with the enthalpy. It's like exothermic, it gives off heat, or it's endothermic, it takes in heat. Not just that, but a little bit, something a little bit more than that as well. And what these entropy changes also mean. So, but, but before we do that, let's go ahead and solve this problem. How do I do entropy problems? The same way you do enthalpy problems. So that's fortunate because if you remember problem number two, the enthalpy problem, it's the change in the enthalpy of a reaction was change in the products minus change in the, or the heats of formation total of the products minus heat of formation total of the reactant. So we just subtracted those two. We do the same thing with entropy. Yeah, same thing. So same thing, except this time I'm not looking up delta H values. I'm looking up delta S values. Remember earlier, several videos ago, we said in the back of your chemistry book, uh, you're going to have delta H, delta S, and delta G values. Look under the right column, find your delta S values, and those you're going to see are going to be a little bit different than your delta H's, but there are still values assigned for them, and we use those to do our calculations, just like delta H. Problems. All right, let's dive in. So the equation to calculate the change in entropy under standard conditions, it's the same basic equation as delta H. What we do is we take the sum of the products, sum of the, oh, the H, the S's, get that out of there, change. Sum of the S's of the standard products, we take the sum of the products, some of the, the, the entropies of the products, we subtract the sum of the entropies of the reactants. Okay, so it looks very similar. It's the same thing. If you remember that problem too, I hope that wasn't that bad. These aren't that bad. Again, this, this, doing this, this problem isn't gonna be too bad. I just gotta make sure that I'm looking at the right column, your S column, and make sure you have the correct value for the state of the matter. Because remember, there are different states of matter. Water can be liquid, water can be gas, and we gotta make sure we're looking up the right state and we get the number of values that somebody before you, a long time before you, has come along and done a lot of work in order to get these values. And I hope you appreciate it. You appreciate it? Yes, you do. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and look up the values under my delta S, my entropy values for these different compounds and elements. Don't you have to, don't you worry about it. You don't have to, because I did it for you, okay? I'm here for you, here for you, it's been a rough day. Okay, so I have those values already done out for you here. One thing I do want to point out, that with these S values, the units for the S values are not in kilojoules per mole like they were with delta H. This time they're gonna be in joules, K mole. So let's put that down, joules, K mole, which is, there's two things different. One, the amount of energy is not in kilojoules and joules, because entropy changes are much smaller. They're much smaller changes than, than the heats of reactions for delta H values, uh, the heat reactions from the H formations. So these are much smaller changes, so we don't have a K in front of that J. I mean, we could, but we get a really, really small number. So they're not very big. Second thing is temperature has something to do with it. Temperature has something to do with it. So the temperature has something to do with entropy. You know that's true. You don't know you know, but you do know. And what I mean by that is, when it comes to temperature, that is gonna have something to do with entropy. Here's an example, H2O. H2O at room temperature, it's room temperature in here. If I get some water, okay, hang on, we'll get some water for you. There's some water, put it in the beaker, there it is, see it moving around, room temperature, it's liquid. Okay, liquid. If I were to take that outside in a cold winter day or put it in the freezer, it's going to freeze. And though that temperature is colder and it makes it more organized. See, more organized means less entropic, so the temperature does have something to do with the entropy of a material. It could be solid, liquid, or gas. At different temperatures, it could be different phases. So that's why the temperature is involved in entropy, because we know that makes a difference in how much entropy that we have within a system. Okay, so that's the state of the matter. All right, so I look up these values, and I've already done that for you. So let's go ahead and put them in and get an answer for 5A. All right, so we've got some hydrogen gas and some copper oxide, solid copper oxide. It's gonna form some 
copper, solid copper, and some water vapor, water vapor, G, so not the liquid, so make sure you look up the right one. But again, I did it for you. All right, so let's go ahead, take the S value for copper. So I look up the S value for copper. Now, some of you are probably saying right now, well, the S value for copper is going to be zero, right? Zero, just like with the enthalpy, it should be zero because it's an elemental copper, and we're talking, you know, room temperature here, it says 25 degrees, gonna be zero, right? No, wrong. Eh. One, look on here, it says copper is 33.3, .3, so it's not zero. What? What? Let's make sure this is balanced. It is a balanced reaction, and I remember I have to use the coefficients out in front. So the coefficient here is, is a one, so I just don't, I don't multiply that by anything. So just leave it as 33.3. .3. So three, I will, we'll get to how come it's, not zero, like it was earlier, just a minute. Then we add the water, the gas water value for the entropy, there it is, 188.7, 188.7. So we take the sum of the product's entropies and we subtract the sum of the reactant's entropies. H2, gas, you might be saying, room temperature should be zero. Eh, no, it ain't, it ain't zero. Oh, I hate chemistry, you hate it, hate it, why not? Right. See, the hydrogen here is, is 131. And I'm going to add to it, so remember, this is the sum, we're taking the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. The copper oxide is 43.5. 43.5, and I'm gonna take those two, add those together, take these two, add these together, subtract them, get an answer. Okay, so before we explain why these aren't zero and maybe some of the numbers and how they might hopefully make sense to you, let's go ahead and get this answer and crank this out. So if I do the math on this, you know, 33.3, 188, uh, 131 plus 170, so I'm a bigger number minus a smaller number, I should have a positive uh, entropy on this. And I should get a positive entropy. And if you do this out, you should get, check it, check it, check it, do it, do it. You should get 47.5. 47.5 joules came out. Okay. 47.5 joules, that's not a lot. I mean, these, like I said, these values are small. So these, these changes are small, but they are important. And let's take a look at some of these numbers and why we get these numbers, what we're getting. How come we don't get zeros for each one right over here? That was you, and the copper was you. How come we don't have zeros for those like we do at the enthalpy changes when we have the basic elemental state at room temperature? Reason is, is because entropy has something to do with motion. Things can move, groove, shake, and bake. Like in gases, more motion, there's less organization. The only time you'll ever get zero motion Zero, bupkis, nil, zilch, nada, nothing. Motion is at absolute zero. Review absolute zero real quick. Absolute zero is where, well, the definition of it, there's no molecular motion. It's so cold that everything, oh. nothing moves. Nothing moves, absolute zero, nothing moves. That has never been achieved. As a matter of fact, the second law of thermodynamics, which has to do with entropy, also has another way of stating it. There's several ways to state the second law of thermodynamics. Another way is saying you can never get absolute zero. You can't get absolute zero. It's a law of science. I didn't get close. Like, but you can't get absolute zero. I'm not going to explain why. It's because we, it's not the scope of what we need to do right now, but you can. So if you can't get absolute zero, then you can never have zero molecular motion and therefore zero entropy. That means everything, everything, everything has some entropy to it because of motion within whatever it is that you have. So that means everything, even the, the, the elements by themselves in their regular good old copper solid state and the hydrogen gas state at room temperature are gonna have some entropy to them. There's some motion and some probability of where things will be. Okay, so we don't have zeros for entropy. Okay, second thing, let's take a look at these numbers and see if maybe they make some sense. Remember, these were the numbers for the products. Look at the entropy. The entropy for the gas is a bigger value than the entropy for the solid. That should make sense, right? Because we have a higher entropy, more disorder for the gas, and we get a, number, a higher number than that. That makes sense. 
And then here, same thing, here I have the 131 and the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen is 131, sorry, I got that back. Hydrogen 131 and the copper oxide is 43.5. Solid is lower entropy than the gas. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so what does this mean? We ended up getting a positive value for the entropy. Positive value for the entropy. In nature, things want to become more entropic. They want to become with more probability, more microstates, in, in layman's term, more disorganized. This is an increase in disorganization. Nature likes that. That's the way things go in nature, unless you put energy into the system. All right, so this is showing an increase in entropy. That's what nature likes. Remember with the enthalpy? Nature likes things to lose energy exothermic reactions for the most part, not in all cases, but for the most part, that's the way things want to go. That's the way things occur in nature. Is there a connection between things which most of the time become exothermic and things most of the time which become a positive or more entropic? The answer is absolutely yes, there is. Um, that's called spontaneity. Spontaneity. Things are more spontaneous in other words, they want to do this if they are exothermic and if the entropy, or if the entropy increases. So I'm going to make a little chart, okay, a little chart here. And here's my chart. And here's my delta H change in enthalpy, heat content, heat, the heat of the reaction kind of stuff. And here is my delta S for a reaction. And here I'm gonna put the words S, or I'll put the SP for, a short for spontaneous, and I'll put N-O-N, non-SP spontaneous. Spontaneous, non -spontaneous. Okay, Again, what does spontaneous mean? Spontaneous means that it's going to happen. It's going to do this thing. It's going to, um, the, if you take uh, methane and, and oxygen and you allow them to combust, you're going to get this reaction out of it. That's a spontaneous reaction. So in a, we know it's spontaneous because it's exothermic. Now, not everything that's spontaneous in life is exothermic, but the vast majority of things that are exothermic are spontaneous. It's the way the reaction wants to go. And remember those K values? Those K values give us an idea of the way things want to go. Large K values, the reaction wants to go that way. Small k values, the reaction doesn't want to go that way. It wants to go the other way. And that has something to do with spontaneity too, which we will get into in the next subunit called Gibbs free energy. It does have something to do with k values. But for now, we know that reactions, sometimes they do want to go the way we write them and sometimes they don't. So here's what we need to know. That something which is spontaneous, that means the reaction wants to go the way it's written. Delta H, if it's a negative, exothermic, that is usually the case. Usually the case is when a delta H is positive, it's non-spontaneous, then it, it usually doesn't want to go that way. Not always, but usually doesn't want to go in the way it's written. When it comes to entropy, entropy, this is going to be the opposite. It goes with entropy. Nature wants to increase entropy. So spontaneous reactions will increase entropy, increase your disorder. And that is a positive for spontaneity and a negative, if the entropy goes down, or in other words, the reaction causes more order, that is usually not the way nature likes it. Not always, but usually not the way nature likes it. All right, so that would become a negative uh, for the uh, non-spontaneous. We would lose entropy, we gain order, which is weird, you gotta think about that. Lose entropy, gain order. Nature doesn't usually go that way. Okay, it doesn't usually go that way. So I'm gonna add to this chart, in the next section when we talk about delta G's, but for now, okay, you might want to jot that down somewhere. All right, and go ahead. Did you get it jotted? Well, if you didn't, I'm going to erase this. You can backtrack, backtrack. All right, so that shows a little bit of, a little bit of organization to our enthalpy and entropy that we've been talking about. It gives us an idea of which way the reaction wants to go. If a reaction is written in a particular direction and I get this result with entropy or with enthalpy, I'll know whether or not that's the reaction, usually the reaction's direction that it will want to go or not. Uh, let's see. Um, 
babbling on about that one. Oh, okay. Wow, 15 minutes in this video already. Where are you going? 5B. 5B. You try this one. Try it on your own. We've gone through several of these problems. Anthropy and entropy, they've done the same way. So you do it. See if you can come up with that answer that I've got written down there. Go ahead. I've got the values written down here for you. Remember, take your products, add them together, subtract the added together reactants, and get an entropy change for that. Uh, don't forget to multiply by this, the, um, the coefficients. In the last problem, we didn't have any coefficients. In this one, we do. There's a 2, a 3, and a 3. So multiply those values by those coefficients. All right? Don't forget to do that. And in this case, we come out with a negative entropy, which would mean that that reaction is most likely not the way it wants to go, and it would actually reverse and go the opposite direction to increase the entropy. But go ahead, try that. See if you can get that on your own. I have faith in you.